Hello everyone, and welcome to another match in the Skullgirls Kickstart League. Tonight we've got Liquid Meat up against Backside of the TV. So we're going to have uh, Phantasme versus McCurpy Derps to start things off. If you're just tuning in for the first time and haven't seen one of these matches before, the way this works is it's a new player league and it's three players on each team, crew battle style. So. Uh, oh, and all games are a best of three. So you'll see McCurpy Derps versus Phantasme for a best of three. And then when they're done, it'll move on to the second member on each team. Also, McCurpy Derps with these parries. Phantasme is doing real good about keeping him zoned out outside of his threat range, though. Band definitely has a lot of ways to... Oh, the armor! I couldn't even see it behind Band. But Band has a lot of ways to kind of bully his way in against zoning. For example, Giant Step. But he still has to find the opportunity to do so, because he's so big he can't just, like, duck under the beam or anything like that. Alright, Phantasma, I actually recognized that same situation as before there. Teched forward, and when McCurpy Derps went for Giant Step, he just decided to go for that single hit armor move again. That time he didn't even take the hit, though, because he was a little bit early. Phantasma swapping over to the double here, though, and I think... No, he doesn't have meter. That... Oh my gosh, okay. Robo Fortune honestly got away real lucky there. Obviously it was in the corner, so the level 3 wouldn't have done full damage, but uh, Robo falling out was very fortunate for Phantasma. The Kirby Derps didn't really change anything there, because he still would have been block punished. But, you know, if you get a character, at least most of one, still good, right? Okay, though, so McCurpy Derps, it just looked like he couldn't quite make the most out of his advantage once he got up close. He had some really good parries on the lasers, and he was doing some pretty good anti-zoning stuff, like he was working the giant steps in real well, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I'd like to see a little bit more of the armored punch as well, because I know that he likes to use that a decent amount. And that's pretty good here. Ooh, armored punch, why bother when you know they're going to jump? Good call out. Okay, unfortunately, he is now all the way back at full screen, though, and this is where it's rough. Yep, okay, it looks like he's figuring out some more options to mix things up. I think he was just a little bit early on that. But with whether he goes for Giant Step, which goes under the air laser, I assume? Or if he jumps over. Ooh, nice throw. Oh, yeah, can't go straight into the 5 Heavy Punch. So McCurpy Derps is backing off after a lot of his uh, a lot of his hits, but it's ended up working for him because he's doing pretty well about getting back in. Oh, and we got someone over in the chat saying uh, Big Band can jump heavy kick and roll in to cover some distance. That's definitely a good thing to know. Uh, so Band's jumping heavy kick does put him in a knockdown state when he lands, <laughs> which means he can just you know hit the deck and roll. Okay, that said, Phantasme, since swapping to the double, has not let up the pressure, and I... Yep, and that'll be it. Does manage to pick that combo back up. Technically dropped, but he was in such a strong position that it didn't end up mattering for him. Okay, so. Next up, we're going to have Raze Rob for Team Backside of the TV. Up against Obero on Liquid Meat. Raze Rob has been a solo Philia player throughout this whole league. Uh, he's pretty good about playing a very like off-tempo game. It makes it surprisingly difficult to push block him, and also know when to be like, okay, the Philia is attacking me. I am going to stand block forward. Uh, Obero, on the other hand, has been swapping characters a ton. I'm actually not sure who we're going to be seeing here. All right, Cerebella, Painwheel, and Philia. That is. Uh, the team that I've seen him play the most, just with Philia added in, has definitely been a decent amount of Cerebella Painwheel. That was kind of a weird knockback angle on that Painwheel assist. I'm not sure if that's what it normally does or if it was something weird with the trade. Oh, nice throw from Rob. Alright, so he's got some good corner pressure here. Ooh, went for a reset, or maybe it was just a drop. Sometimes it can be hard to tell in Skullgirls, for sure. Ooh. Uh-oh. Yeah, that probably wasn't uh, quite what he was looking for. Maybe trying to call out a jump, actually. 
quick overhead there from Rob. If he can convert this all the way, this should be a dead Cerebella. Oh, goes for a reset. Uh, I don't think he needed to there. Maybe he wasn't quite aware of the health value. There's not a whole lot of trios in this league, so sometimes you can like assume that they still have a bunch of health left when they don't. That said, how will Rob deal with this par or parasol pain wheel? Super fast, high lows, very safe on pressure. Lots of armor, and yeah, this is this is super rough. Can Obro get the kill here? Oop, nope, does drop it, but he's still just in such a strong position, and that'll do it. Man, yeah, Obro showing why that pain wheel is just so scary. Rob clearly had his moments in there too, the super quick overheads, really good grab callouts. Uh, hopefully Rob can figure out how to deal with the pain wheel armor. I would... I assume that he just doesn't have much experience fighting the character because she's, like, let's be real, she's incredibly rare to see, at least at the level we're playing at. Uh, I believe Obro is the only Pain Wheel left in the league. There used to be two because Fettuccini used to play Pain Wheel. Make it flashy, guys. But yeah, hopefully Rob can recognize some places. Ooh, what a round start. Just dash up launcher. It is pretty safe for Philia though, so sometimes you can get away with it. Alright, goes for the reset. Ooh, didn't quite trust it. Or maybe he thought there was going to be a jump. This should be a dead Cerebella though. Yeah, oh my gosh. Yeah, I figured it'd get further into the combo than that. Yeah, not a lot of trios in this league so far. Good blocks there from Rob. Looks like he swapped back to uh, stand block at the very last second. Yep, good DP assist there from Obero. So he is running specifically Pain Wheel featuring a DP at the moment. So when Pain Wheel starts like flashing with lightning like that, the majority of the time, I think, it means that, yeah, it's armored. For example, that right there does make DPing against her pretty difficult, though it does have a limited number of hits, I believe. So if Rob does DP into Gregor Sampson, it might just break the armor. Oh my gosh. So much damage coming out there. All right, Rob with an opening. Can he convert this into a character? He can. All right. So if Rob can land a snap here, he's also going to be doing pretty well health-wise. Uh, Obero, I think, on his least familiar character out of his team right now. Is there a block? Yeah, okay. Full damage? Does go for the light starter, which uh, normally I'd say is a bad idea, but it's actually really good recognition from Rob. That move is surprisingly hard to block punish. Uh-oh. Okay, this is coming down to the wire. I think that catches. Yeah, okay. One and one. Got a match here, folks. Lots of uh, Philia stuff back and forth there at the end, of course. Okay, so Rob hasn't seemed to either catch on or maybe he just can't get his hands to quite recognize when to do it uh, fast enough. But when Pain Wheel is glowing with the lightning, it is armor, so you can grab her. There's always a mix-up because she can release the armor on the move early. But if she does, she no longer has armor, so you can hit, you know, some good rock, paper, scissors stuff there. Okay, and so because this is a crew battle, if Obero can take this, then his team is in a really strong spot. Backside of the TV would be down to just one member left. Uh, however, if Raze Rob can grab this, then he'll even things back up to one down a piece. Uh-oh. I think he went for the wrong version of Hairball there. No tag on the assist. I think he was worried about maybe a diamond... Uh, not deflector. Whatever Cerebella's level 3 is called. Someone in chat can tell me. I just know it as her level 3 that's a low for some reason. <laughs> yeah, good blocks there from Rob. Oh, can he convert it? Nope. Didn't quite recognize. Goes straight into super and calls out one more. Alright, Philly is in the back regenning some health for Obero there. Ooh, that was a pretty big chunk of damage on Cerebella from just that one hit. Uh-oh. Okay, yeah, because of the weird hit angle, couldn't get full damage on the character. This might be a dead pain wheel. Ooh. Uh, if not before, then certainly now. 
All right, Robin, a real strong spot all of a sudden. Definitely looked like Obro had the advantage. Nice reset into that grab bag. Doesn't look like you can get too much off of it combo-wise, but that did a solid chunk of damage, and that is a really fast command grab. Uh, okay, so Rob really likes to go for raw level 3 on Wake Up with Philia, because it just does insane damage. Though it might not even come to that. He might not need to. You will see here, though. All right, what's the pressure from Obero? Oh, this is going to chip kill. Yeah. Unfortunately, that is just a checkmate situation. So good recognition there by Rob. Uh, Obero ended up just losing a little bit too much health. That is kind of the risk of running a trio. Sometimes you just get the person in the back clipped and where'd half their health go. We saw that happen to Sarah Bella there in that match. Okay, so uh, Razor Rob did manage to tie it up one and one. Now we're going to see which team ends up with the advantage. Yeah, if, uh, if this is one of your first times tuning in, three-person crew battles, one fights one, two fights two, three fights three, and then whoever is left goes through until there is only one player, or one team with players remaining. So whoever wins this match will have two on their team to fight one on the other. See who the anchor will be. Okay, so Fettuccini is the neon blue Beowulf here, and Oniho is the pink and white one with the trio team. They've each got double grapplers. Oniho also has Aphilia, though. All right, Fettuccini has some... Ooh, yeah, I've seen that reset come out from him quite a few times. It is... It works for him quite a bit. And I think... Okay, he went for the reset there. I think he could have killed Meterless, but yeah... It, uh, Spiegel not recognizing the reset point that- oh boy. Oh, okay, so Big Band so big that he couldn't get the full confirm on uh, Beowulf there. Didn't quite end up mattering though, because he did manage to pick it back up. Good block there from Fettuccini though. Got a bunch of damage on the Big Band with the super, but put him in a really bad spot. Oh, Fettuccini actually giving up all of that red health. And yeah, no, Oniho, his only real option there was waking up by mashing either Tag Out or a Reversal Super. Did not recognize his health in time. And Fettuccini is starting to just run away with this game. I hope that Spiegel recognizes that uh, 5 Heavy Kick into... Is it Wolf? No, not Blitzer. Uh, wolf Shoot reset that Fettuccini is going for. Because that really just tore him up, if not. Alright, so Fettuccini up one now. Getting back into it. I assume we'll see the same team from both sides. These have been pretty much the characters that they've been rocking for the whole league, uh, the exception being Fettuccini has swapped around his partner for Bayo a couple times. Sounds like he's definitely liking the Bayo band though, of course. Plenty of damage on deck there. Ooh, looks like uh, Oniha or Spiegel was just too far to actually pick up off that, unfortunately. And I have to assume that that was a dropped... Oh! Alright, can you get a combo off of it? Looks like. Uh-oh. Okay, so Spiegel has been having some occasional connection issues. Seems to have been fine for most of the night tonight, but uh, things are starting to be a bit choppy. Hopefully that's just on my spectator client, though. Going straight into the pickup. Uh, looks like whatever this started with was pretty damage deleting, but that's still a lot of pretty good amount of damage there. Ooh, and yeah, this combo is doing quite a bit more. Uh oh, looks like he went a little bit early on that. So this move is pretty hard to punish, but yeah, Fettuccini does have the punish on deck. Starting with I think that's a uh, crouching medium button. Oh my gosh. And plenty of damage here. 
Good recognition from Spiegel. Oh no, but uh, Big Band is heavy, so you probably have to do that pickup just a little bit sooner. Ah, uh, the Bayo tag. Unblockable at all times. Ooh, unless you're already pressing buttons. Still, didn't block it. Fettuccini choosing to get his chair back instead of cranking the hype. That's going to be some damage. Oh no, he drops the pickup. Okay, Spiegel uh, actually choosing to jump out there. Oh, and hitting Fettuccini with a bit of his own medicine. Uh-oh. This is going to be a lot of damage. Okay. Ended up being less than I expected, but Spiegel is now out of the Beowulf. Which means Fettuccini at this point does have the health advantage because he's running the duo in the first place. Nice cancel into the command grab there. Yeah, that was real quick. And this will be some good damage. I think he's too far. Yeah, I would have tried it too. <laughs> right at that edge case. And it is big band, so maybe it'll hit. This should be a dead big band as long as he, yep, gets the clap. And Fettuccini down to solo Bayo. Uh, Bayo definitely a character who really likes having an assist as a fairly weak neutral without them. But well, yeah, there's the scary bit once he gets in. Right back to being just as terrifying as ever. Yeah, Spiegel, being a Bayo main, does not want to give Fettuccini the chair. Oh, but he has to. Yeah, the clock's running low. And Fettuccini does have the life lead. Will he get the combo off this? Oh, does not. Okay, I'd be really careful about Fettuccini going straight for giant arm. I don't think it matters here. What a wake up throw. Oh boy, okay. Uh, if he can not get hit. Oh, Oh no, he pressed a button! Oh my gosh, yeah, and it timed out there in the middle of that super, but Fettuccini ended up getting the uh, getting the hit after all. Okay, and so with that, Spiegel is eliminated, backside of the TV is down to just Raze Rob remaining. We're gonna have uh, Raze Rob go up against Phantasme, because we do go by team order ahead of time. Phantasme fought first, so good to go. Okay, so here we're going to see a solo Philia deal with Robo Fortune and double zoning. I don't know which assist Phantasme is going to be using for double here. I believe I've seen them use both, um, both the Lugers to help with zoning and the, what is it, Battle Butt? Something like that. So, I guess we'll see here. So, on the one hand, Rob has to get in solo against this... <laughs> against this uh, Robo Fortune. He does definitely have the mobility to do it. However, it looks like he was having some issues there at full screen with the stand laser catching his jump. Ooh, goes for two hits, yep. Oh, okay, so Rob was just a little bit early on that air throw there. We'll see if Phantasme kind of recognizes what Rob was going for. Yeah, Rob... Uh, He's getting caught holding forward a lot in the air. Ooh, just sliding on in, though. Okay, Phantasme has squeaked out of situations just barely a couple times now. Uh, that said, he will get his double in, and he's still got quite a bit of health. Full health on double and some more regenning on Robo in the back, while Rob's pretty low. He'll basically need a snap here at this point if he doesn't want to risk being chipped to death. Oh no, what happened? He blocked the first one. Um... Okay, I did not realize that was not a true block string. I didn't realize you could be hit if you'd blocked the first one. Unless that was just a significant rollback on my end or something. Crazy. 
But yeah, so Rob, it looked like he was having a decent amount of trouble dealing with the lasers. Uh, he wasn't confident enough on when they were coming out up high to be able to... Uh... Oh, Cryo, actually, yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it did cross up somehow. It all depends on your skill. Okay, I'll be interested to see if Rob... Yeah, he just goes straight in from the very start. Doesn't even want to get put to mid-screen. Ooh, tries to bait something out, but Phantasme does go for the armored button. Okay, I believe that move is safe, but it is still minus, for sure. Uh, will Phantasme go for... Nope, Phantasme going for the jumping heavy punch, and man, Rob off to a way better start than last game. I was curious to see if we'd see the swap come out from Phantasme, but looks like he's going for his other core defensive option instead. Okay, this is also a rough spot for Rob, though. Being in the corner against double pressure, it is incredibly difficult to get out of. Uh, and even if you can get out of it, you're generally just resetting to a longer range neutral, which isn't really where Philia wants to be. Ooh, yeah, just throw the wake up. It's a true mix-up in this game with low. <laughs> and Rob just going for these jump heavy punches. Yeah, it looks like he's catching quite a few of these. Uh, oh no, just a... Okay, so he was a bit late on that punish. However, Phantasme was trying to jump there, so he was not low blocking. Okay, if that had hit, that honestly might have killed. Uh, Rob really likes to go for the level 3 when he's backed into a corner like that. Yeah, good... Good safe stuff from Rob there. He cannot afford to get hit here. Yeah, yeah, and Phantasme. That is definitely his strength in the league so far, is just getting a stray little hit and managing to take it all the way. So congratulations to Team Liquid Meat. Backside of the TV put up one heck of a fight.